Hello Houston, this is Jane Glover in London on what should have been my opening night of Magic Flute with the wonderful HGO. And I'm so sorry that for obvious reasons I can't be with you, but the first thing to say is that I hope you were all well and healthy and safe. My goodness, Houston has been through so much in the last few years with the flood and the aftermath of that, and you all dealt with it so brilliantly. Uh, and now having to deal with this is too much, really. So my thoughts are with you, and I hope you all stay safe. But Magic Flute, my goodness, there's an opera. And uh, I've done several productions of it in my time, and I was so looking forward to doing this Barry Kosky production, which I gather is intriguing and sheds all sorts of new light on it. Um, because, for sure, whenever I've done it, I feel that... I peel off another layer of that onion and get a little bit closer to discovering what it's all about. This great, monumental, complicated piece that is the magic flute. What's it all about? Well, in a curious way, it's it's sort of three stories in one uh, and, and shouldn't work at all, really. On the one hand, we have this sort of bird catcher comic pantomime guy who's looking for a wife and uh, goes through all sorts of trials and tribulations, meeting goodies and baddies, baddies in the shape of the Queen of the Night who sings very high, and um, goodies in the sense of, uh, in, uh, of Zoroastro, the priest who sings very low, uh, but he gets his girl at the end, and so there's that gorgeous uh, pantomime sort of story and all sorts of magic and uh, effect and uh, scenic excitement. Secondly, there is uh, a sort of classic rescue opera in that we have a handsome prince, Tamino, who's sent to rescue the daughter of the queen uh, from the apparently uh, bad clutches of Zoroastro. Um, and in the course of rescuing her, they then go together through all sorts of trials, fire and water, um, and come out at the end achieving not just great love, but uh, great enlightenment. Because there is the third strand in this extraordinary opera, the, the story of, it's a Masonic allegory, if you like. Now we know uh, Mozart was a, a Freemason and a, a very devoted one. Um, and it meant a lot to him, the, the brotherhood of, of the order, the lodge that he was in. He perhaps got into a bit of hot water with them because he might have given away a few secrets in Magic Flute of what happens at some of their ceremonies. But certainly we have uh, a sort of allegory in that uh, Tamino, through his journey, achieves truth and enlightenment. Um, and all sorts of wonderful instruction through going through uh, all these rituals and uh, magnificent ceremonies. And so what began with a sort of bird catcher and a, and a, and a serpent and uh, three ladies and so on ends up with a scene that uh, begins as if we're in a cathedral with this monumental chorale prelude and all sorts of trials and 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 it's huge and um, mind-blowing really so how on earth does it work it has no business to work it's uh, as I say three plots thrown into the bucket all at the same time um, but out comes this complete masterpiece um, entirely due to the genius of of not only Mozart that goes without saying. The music is profound and inspiring and as well as uh, gloriously ingenuous is actually quite complicated. Um, but his genius goes without saying, but also the genius of his extraordinary colleague, the librettist and theatre manager Emmanuel Schikaneder. They put it on together and they constructed it together and somehow they made it work together. And of course Schikaneder played uh, Papageno. Uh, in the original. So uh, we have this feeling that is that this opera which feels not just huge in the sense that it deals with all of mankind but also quite intimate in that it's written for a small company that Mozart knew very well and there is contrast after contrast and 
it's just intriguing. And as I say, every time I do it, I think now I'm going to discover what it's really about. So Houston, I'm sorry I'm not with you tonight to perform it, but let us hope we will get to do it together soon. And in the meantime, I wish you all the very best. Stay safe. Bye-bye.